Howdy everyone, and say hello if you've not read to Larry the Librarian. He's going to be the uh, librarian for my Dark Angels army. Most of you I'm sure recognise him from the Dark Vengeance box set. Um, so he's a plastic mini. Not done any real conversion work on him. The only things that are different is I put a cork base on. And I have mentioned this before, it's only a very little thing, but his little finger fell off, sadly, as I was taking him off the sprue. So that's a teeny bit of green stuff, so it's a slightly thicker little finger than yours if you have one. Um, as I was painting him up, every time I started to do something new, I um, got my camera out and just filmed a very brief explanation of the next steps. So what you're going to see is sort of the sequence of uh, paints that I use, the order that I use them. I've tried to use predominantly the new range of Citadel colour. Whenever I've used one of the old range, fingers crossed, I'll put up a comment letting you know what the modern equivalent would be. Um, slightly unusually for me, I tried to replicate as well as I could the Games Workshop paint scheme. Slightly more dour, and of course not as neat and fantastic as theirs, but I think I've done quite nicely, quite a nice job. If you want to get a mini that's at least a sort of approximate to the uh, work on the official Dark Avengers models, if you follow the scheme I've given you, you won't come far wrong. Okay, so say goodbye to them, Larry. Return your books on time. Cheers, Larry. Take care, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, folks. First step, we've got a librarian here that you can see. And we're going to be doing the power armour. We're going to start with a base coat of Cantor Blue, wherever the power armour is on the mini. Okay. Whilst the blue is drying, we're going to paint the face with this base coat of Rhinoxide to get a lot of definition, a lot of distinction between the recesses of the face and the more raised areas like the GW model. We're going to thin it down slightly because there's a lot of very slight detail on the face we don't want to lose. Okay, our blue's dry now, so now we're going to add a shade of Drakenhof Nightshade uh, to put a bit of depth in the recesses of the power armour. Okay, whilst the uh, Drakenhof Nightshade washer was drying, I did my first coat on the robes of Steel Legion Dry. Now, I did add a bit of water. I knew it was going to be a couple of coats. If the first coat looks like this, do not worry. We will get it looking really nice and solid before we start building up layers, but it's just important that we don't do it too thick to begin with, otherwise you'll lose detail. You'll see I've actually painted over some of the little uh, lining and things, which will later be another colour. That's fine, we don't want to have like little gaps of undercoat visible. And if we have the paints thin enough, then we're not going to obscure any detail, it'll be fine. Whilst that first coat's drying then, I'm going to go back to the Cantor Blue and I'm going to paint it back over all the power armour except from the uh, darkest recesses. So any sort of little indentations, any gaps, they're going to keep the uh, nightshade on. Any bits that are slightly slightly more raised, we're going to get a thin coat of Cantor Blue on top. Okay. Okay, so we've used our Cantor Blue over everything but the recesses. Whilst that was drying, I did our second coat of Steel Legion Drab, and you can see it looks a bit more solid now. This time I deliberately avoided the little bits of detail so as not to obscure them when I go over them in a different colour. Next up, we're going to do two layers of highlighting on the power armour. First one's going to be a 50 50 mix of Cantor and Altaiot Blue. Second layer is just going to be pure. I'll try up blue. Okay, so you'll have, next time you see us, we'll have done those. Okay, guys, what I've done is I've highlighted up to our all top blue just on the main parts of the power armor. You can probably see that. Next stage is I'm going to take some more on top blue. On top blue. I'll take a latoc blue. Apologies and just use it to start doing the uh, edge highlights of the power armour. I've also done a third and final 
Steel Legion, Steel Legion, I can't say the name of paints, Steel Legion Drab cover there you can see so we've got quite a nice thick bit of paint there so I'll do that and then we'll get on to the next stage okay with our first lot of edge highlighting done we can let that dry for a minute we need some lead belcher uh, for all the uh, silvers and uh, metallics after that we're going to do the next layer of line highlighting which is going to be 50-50 on top with 50-50 Ice blue. Now, ice blue is an old range colour. Fingers crossed. I can't think of the new name of the new range equivalent, but it should be coming up here right about now for you to check, and that should work absolutely fine. So we'll see you after that. Okay. Next up, I'm going to do some washes. I'm going to do some, some non oil over all the metal areas that I've painted in the creases of the robes. At any point where the robe meets another part of either armour or clothing, which is another part of the model, like for instance, there where the robe meets the belt, I'm going to put the uh, wash, but I'm not going to do it all over. We don't need that, that will make it hard to When I've done that, I'm going to take some pure ice blue, water it down a bit, and use it just on the very edge of the highlights here. And that's the highlights nearly done. Okay. Next up, we're going to put colour band green on all the green areas, like the interior of the cloak. And we're going to put some water down screen with gold just to the very, very tips of the highlights. Quick look to see how mine's looking so far. I'm sure this could be looking even better by this stage. Okay, next up we're going to highlight up the green. First up we're going to do 50-50 mix of Caliban and uh, Warboss. Then we're going to do all Warboss, then we're going to mix in some Warpstone Glow to highlight up to there. Okay, and that's just for green bits of rope here, the green on the front, and also the screen pattern on the back. You can probably see, if you've not already, a few places where I've gone over lines and things, that's fine, because I use thin paints. At the end of painting the mini, you can just tidy it up with the correct colours, and no one will ever know, it will be our little secret. Okay, um, by deliberate mistake, I have got to do the inside bit of a cloak here, and the pattern on the front green, so I've just quickly done those. I've also taken a bit of Cadian Flesh Tone, and used it just to quickly pop out the details on the guy's face there. Um, basically, just got the paint, I left it reasonably thick, only diluted it a little bit, and brushed it off on the palette till my brush was nearly dry. Not exactly dry brushing, not quite there, but enough so it was easy just to get on those high features and we'll do another shade of highlights there in a bit. But anyway, next up, the grey detailing. We're going to do Codex Grey. Um, if I hadn't, didn't have a bottle of Codex Grey to finish off, I'd be using Dawnstone there. And it should be okay, even though it's just a layer of paint. And that will be areas like the front, the Dark Angel symbol, the ram, the skull on the back, that sort of thing. When I've done that, the tubes either side of the Dark Angel symbol are going to get a coating of Doomball Brown. Okay, folks. Getting there. Started to look quite cool now. Okay folks, so got the first coat of grey on. Um, following the great game that we've got, let's forget to do green trim. I realise there's a bit of green trim on the hood there, which we've got done. Next up we're going to get the cloak highlighted up. So we're going to start with 50-50 Bane Blade Brown and Steel Legion. Then just Bane Blade and Bane Blade mixed with a touch of Screaming Skull. Okay. Okay folks, next up I'm going to highlight the grey areas with some blue and grey. I'm the off-white areas, for instance, um, scrolls, pages from the book, that sort of thing. I'm going to be uh, putting some black off flesh on. Okay. Okay folks, so I was getting a bit of librarian fever there for a couple of minutes, so I've had about an hour or so off. Um, 
just to get my head round life, get rid of the painting fatigue. Right, last thing we did, um, after we painted using the uh, grey and uh, broke our flesh, we put a very thin known oil wash, so watered it down over the uh, grey and white areas and then highlighted them back up. And then we used a small amount of, I was going to say Devlin mud, no, but Agrax Earth Shade over the things we've done with Akarth Flesh to make them look a bit more weathered. There's the paints there for reference. Next, the very highlights of the grey white, we're going to do skull white. We're going to use both our gold on the sword hilt and a couple of the little details. And the uh, wax on the purity seals is going to be corn red. So, nearly there, starting to look forward to it. Um, see you in a minute. Just discovered um, that the hilt has another bit of white on, so I've uh, quickly popped that on. When that's dry, I'll go through the same process of a uh, thin black wash and highlight it back up. Next, we've got some old range burnished gold. Obviously, I'll uh, pop up the you and improvement in there. I'm just going to use that to um, dry brush up and highlight bits of Balthazar gold in. Um, another thing I didn't notice until just about now was these Doomball Brown cables is actually one attached to the sword too that's actually very difficult to see which I didn't see it the first time uh, just in that hand there so I've got that one up so anyway highlighting the gold now right guys we're very very close now um, we've got the librarian's book and the strapless keys are on right outside and for the get the book looking a bit like well worn leathery, snake bite leather as ever. One alternative up here now. Oh, we're getting close, so close I've nearly tasted. Um, hope if you've been following along all the time with this yourself, yours is looking quite cool. Okay, guys, so it's come to time to paint the uh, blade of the sword. First coat is going to be the sword with the silver. Uh, new range, actually, you know, this one off the top of my head, that's Rune Bang Steel. Okay, folks, whilst that bit of the sword's drying there. Oh, also did a couple of bits, just sort of the rivet work there with the silver. Little bits on the helmet and the in silver. Got those sorted. Next, we're going to get some uh, Abdon black, just to get the sword hilt and the wires going into the Psyker's hood. Get those sorted black, and then we're going to paint this bit of a cork base here, Canicus Standard Grey. So, see you in a second when that's done. Going to use my Micron Arts pen now to add some detail to the purity seals. Then I'm going to go over them again with a very thin mix of Agrax Earthshade. This is my pot of uh, Gilliman blue, the label had fallen off when I brought it. I'm going to be using that on the blade of the sword, and then some of the recesses of the blade are going to get some of the uh, Drakenhof Nightshade. That's going to go on the blade. Okay, folks, very nearly there now. Okay, all that's really left for me now, guys, is I am going to finish off the base of the mini cork base. I'm going to dry brush the top of it with some Codex Grey, then a very small amount of shadow grey around the edges, and then the sort of bits in between the top surface and the base, where we can see it's sort of crumbling away there. We're going to pop some Agrax Earth Shade, and then. The mini is going to be done. I'll just give you a quick look at the sword there. The back and the front. 